Hi, I'm Jim W6LG or YouTube Elmer. Welcome to my radio room here in Rockland, California. I want to show you how I put coax cables together and try to do it in a way where water is not likely to leak in and the connection is likely to remain secured. So here we go, putting two coax cables together. I'm using uh, PL259s and a uh, two inch bulkhead connector. Okay, so there's a couple things that um, you're going to need to put uh, two coax cables together. Obviously, um, some kind of connector on the ends of both. I'll get into that towards the end. Uh, use a quality connector, don't use garbage. Um, another thing you're going to need is a little bit of, and very little, isopropyl alcohol. cotton swab q-tip to put on the um, uh, alcohol and to apply uh, Noalox. I use Noalox, you can use Penetrox, needs to be the non-conductive kind, um, stuff works great. Uh, you're also going to need um, what was referred to in the ARRL AR, AR, article as a barrel connector but actually it's a bulkhead connector like that. This one's um, gold-plated nickel. So what I do is I dip the um, Q-tip into uh, the alcohol and then clean the outside of the connector as best I can. Get any debris that might be on it off. Same thing with the two, PL259, run it around on the inside. And then take uh, just a dab of this Penetrox or Noalox, so little you can hardly see it. And then I go around the, uh, the bulkhead connector. And I do use a bulkhead connector as opposed to um, this connector, which is referred to in the article but not shown. That is a barrel connector. It looks like a barrel. It's a PL258. This one's silver plated, gold plated. You can use it, but I'll show you why I don't. So I go around that and then uh, put the two together. Now I do use the nuts from the bulkhead connector that come with it and a bulkhead connector is to go through a bulkhead or a wall or a piece of wood or something. And I'm going to show you why I use it. Um, and again, use quality coax connectors. And then tighten those two down by hand and get them hand tight. And then run the nuts down so that they bump up against the barrel of the PL259. Take some pliers and just snug that connection. And I mean, hold one, one side with your hand and the other, the pliers, and just snug it up you can also use a wrench, of course, an open-end wrench. So now it's like double nutting a screw. I've got basically these two up against each other. It is a more likely a watertight connection than not. The next step then is to wrap on the um, self-amalgamating or self-annealing tape and um, there are several brands available. Uh, you can use um, the stuff that you find on Amazon. I think there's just two manufacturers of it. There's also the uh, uh, Tremflex, which I'll, I'll put a link to. That works really well. So what I do is I start at one end and then I start uh, pretty much the first wind out in the open 
before the connector and then try to do about 50% coverage of the self amalgamating tape. And it sort of missed on that. And I go the com cover the complete connection and again about an inch and, and as you do this it's best to stretch the tape. And it will stretch. And some of it will stretch um, more than 50%. The tape that I used uh, is rated for UV. Then I go about an inch or at least one complete wind onto the next cable. And again, I'm, I'm not pulling it tight because I can't with how I'm holding it, but I would be pulling on it and stretching it each time and then cut it with some decent shears. So I've got an inch, although it's off the camera, an inch out this way. So I can turn the camera just a bit. So I've covered it one time. I would do, go back again, starting beyond the first wind, all the way back, again, all the way back. Do it at least two times. I've often done four, um, just to make certain that there's no way water can get in. Over time, this stuff becomes a um, pretty much a one piece coverage and then you could take a utility knife and if you have to remove it slit where the, the where there's metal and not the coax and the stuff will literally pop off it'll spring right off um, if you use the PL258 this guy um, the uh, you don't have the double nuts which is okay, but if you have an area where there's going to be vibration or uh, changes in temperature that are extreme, I like to have the bulkhead connector with the extra set of um, nuts on it to uh, allow it to really double nut the whole thing. And again, you don't want any gaps like I've got here. You want to really snug it up tight and that's the reason for going back and forth and back and forth is to get it tight now with respect to the kind of coax connector do buy decent connectors this is about uh, this is what i removed from service and when i went to test this cable with the uh, antenna analyzer it was squirrely. I was getting all kinds of bizarre results and you can see why. It was just totally corroded. Why was it corroded? Water got in and it just ruined the connector. Now this connector is a really poor design compared to the one I got from um, uh, hamsupply.com. Okay so here's the connector that I did use and here's why. Uh, it's nicely machined. In fact I'll say it's beautifully machined. Uh, it's got a flat surface surface for your wrench, but you want to keep this in still, and the wrench will be on here and turn this. So this is the part you're going to turn when you put it together. There's a um, uh, an O-ring that goes here. And there's another O-ring where these two pieces come together. And uh, let's look inside that. Uh, you can see that that's gold plated and that receives the pin uh, or the center conductor on the heliax. So the way they have you do it, and you've got to do it exactly, and, and this is sort of roughed out. I would clean up the, uh, the dielectric here, but they want you to cut it back uh, basically what amount to six ribs and then halfway down you remove the uh, the shield 
right down to the center conductor and then trim it off so it's about two-thirds that length and then uh, file down or round over the center conductor so that when you insert it into this connector um, it fits easily and doesn't do damage. So this piece then grabs the uh, shield of the Heliax and it really bites into it. And like I said, there's an O-ring that goes an O-ring that goes here. There's another O-ring here. So this would go down like that. This goes over it. And you've got to do it just as they say in terms of distances, dimensions. And then wrench it down. The reason why I like this connector is that. It's a PL259 and not an end connector. And I've had trouble with um, end connectors uh, failing over time. So uh, this connector that I like a lot came from hamsupply.com. And here's the real surprising thing. As well as it's machined, and it really is nicely done. And it's a beautiful connector. It was just $10. So if you need something like this, if you're using Heliax or the... Uh, uh, this, the other kind that, that is a little more flexible. Uh, look at hamsupply.com uh, as opposed to that kind of connector. Uh, this is aluminum. It fell apart over time. It, you know, it just went to pieces and it ate away at the, uh, the similar metal issues. And so that's how I put two coax cables together. And for me, it's worked well. Use a bulkhead, run the nuts down, tighten them up. Um, so from Blurry, Rockland, California, I'm Jim, W6LG. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, 